and we are live good morning good afternoon good evening good morning if you are in the philippines good evening if you are here in america and good afternoon if you are in hawaii we have friends coming on board today to share to us the tips in acing our exam especially the licensure exam for teachers so we call this let my goodness i have when was the last time well let me see <laughs> i'm trying to count maybe 18 years it's been 18 years or 19 years that i took the licensure exam but i am just so proud that cebu normal university the university where i graduated college we always produce top notchers in the licensure exam um without further ado i will be introducing later our um top notchers few of them actually two uh we will be joined by miss olive as well as adrian but miss olive is still trying to get us <laughs> get in here uh her internet uh is not working so i don't know let me just call her adrian sir adrian from hawaii hi aloha oh, di ba, hangin ka, <laughs> Hi everybody, how is it going? Nana Hi. said me, we're here, we're back, and we're excited para sa atong show for today, right? You know what, I think the last time we were live was on February, it was around Valentine's. And well, <laughs> a month after, after a couple of weeks, we are back because apparently tomorrow is another date for testing you know for teachers um in the philippines so we need to be certified in order for us to teach especially in public schools in the philippines and that's also one of the requirements to go abroad if you notice i am already here in baltimore for 13 years adrian just got here in less than a year right adrian with all yes. of 14 years, Rachel for less than a year, and most of us uh, graduated in Cebu Normal University, and Miss Olive is from San Carlos in Cebu, but we all, we all, grad, we all passed our licensure exam, right, Adrian? Of course, that's why I'm here in Hawaii. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Cebu Normal University, you know, for training us. And not just that, because after, right. we, after we had our four years of education in Cebu Normal University, I know that was the basic, the foundation and all. But I don't know, did you review, Adrian? Do you remember if you took any review? Um, so, like, yeah, at that time, we have an in-house review. And then I even, like, enroll in another, I mean, I think the FI, Sanyo FI also offered another review. So aside from the in-house, and it, which is during the semester, I had another um, review during the summer. I know we will be talking on the things that we did for the test, guys, but that's not actually the, the point here. We have our two top notchers that's from Cebu Normal University. And Ms. Oh, Olive wow. is kind enough to put together an interview for them. So without further ado, I'm going to put some slideshows. And I hope everybody can share our live stream, especially to those that would really need this. If you know somebody that will be taking a test, not just for... um. Actually, it's for teachers. However, if you are going to do the test, then might as well watch this also. I just want to give a shout out to Sheila, to Alvin, and please do share this live stream because towards the end of this live stream, hopefully our, um, our guests will be able to come join us. If not, we are just going to give away some prizes. All right, so without further ado, this is how to get ready for teacher's licensure exam. All right, see you later, Adrian. Okay. All right, I don't know. Would I be playing this one? <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's play this. Okay. 
it looks like we, I have to say something. <laughs> Can you hear me if I will remove myself? Miss Olive is here finally. So it looks like we have to talk about it because if we are just going to let it play, they are not able to hear us. So we will do a repeat. Let's stop this share screen first. Miss Olive, do you want to say something? Hello. All right. It looks like she could not even hear us. Miss. Sign language. Can she hear us? I don't think it's so. It's not with Osha. Walay voice, ma'am, Ann. So we really have to talk, and maybe when I edit this, we will just be on the side. It's not going to work. Hmm. There's no audio. All right. Okay. They can. They, we see you, Miss Olive, so that's on the go, actually. But I don't know if she can see us. We're live, Miss Olive. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, well, waiting for Miss Olive again. I know our, we have some technical difficulties in here. Joanne is also here. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to put Joanne in a little bit. But we are just going to play our, can you miss who hear us? Hello. Yeah, I could hear you. Oh, okay. Yay, so we can hear you. Do you want to hear you or say something why we are doing this? Uh, we're doing this because it's going to be the licensure exam for teachers on Sunday, and we really want to help those who are taking the test um, have good tips so that they can hopefully pass the test. Thank you. Sorry, I was very cool. You're doing great. You're doing great. All right. That is okay. My feed. All right. I guess that's about it. it um, Joanne, I don't know if Joanne can hear us, but Joanne's already here. But what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to, okay, um, add this to the stream. Maybe we can just present it. You can still hear us, right? Because we are in here. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh... So I think we'll just have to read through it because it would, if I will exit or I'll, I'll remove you, then we are not going to be able to be heard, get heard. All right. All right. Anyhow, let's see. All right, I guess I'll just have to read it. <laughs> All right, the alumni of Rizal Youth Leadership Institute presents how to get ready for the teacher's licensure exam in 2020. I'm just going to mute you. Sorry. Game plan. So here it goes. Today, we have some very special guests. We have Joanne Maglasang, a licensure exam for Teachers Board Top Natural number two from CNU BSED 2005. And congratulations also because we have our other special guests here, Vincent Bayawa, a licensure exam board top natural number one of CNU BSED or BS Ed 2021, a very recent one. 
So what is a what is LET? Licensure examination for teachers. This is what LET stands for. This test is taken by education graduate students who wants to be licensed to teach in the subject area they have majored. It is the exam with the most examinees in a year in the Philippines. The exam is normally conducted twice by PRC or the Professional Regulation Commission annually, but they have revised this recently during the pandemic. Welcome, Welcome Joel. Joel. Uh, it's been a it's while, been a while since, since we have been, been you, know, you know, online, online together. together, and I'm just wondering, uh, after all these years, I mean, I know you as a student, but I'm curious. Again, I'm always curious. Uh, how would you, you know, like to introduce yourself to our viewers right now? Like, tell us something that we probably do not know is Joanne McGlasson. Go ahead, John. Hello, Miss Olive. I'm really quite surprised with the first question. It's also good to see you, Miss. I can very much remember how you brought me to places around the Philippines. So you brought me to Manila, you brought me to Baguio, and you brought me to Bohol. So I will be forever indebted to you for all those lags and, and stories, of course, but with a purpose. Okay, thank you so much for that, Miss. Now, going back to your questions, so one thing that people would not know about me, okay, but they might want to know about me, is I'm actually fond of action films and martial arts movies and the like. So something which might not be fitting for someone like me perhaps but yeah i enjoy action films okay then second people might think that i already know what i really want in life and what i want to to do in life or yeah but in fact i am still in that process of discovering and finding out what's really meant for me and where I could be truly happy and find fulfillment. That would be all. You know, Vincent, you did something that a lot, a lot of students can only dream of. And the way people know you by being the number one in the boarding exam is really like whoa it's really different like people look up to you and i wonder if you know this is how you view yourself or how would you like to you know introduce yourself to others especially to our viewers who are right now, who, right now who are uh in a way hoping to get to know you like, you know, you as a person and not just the number one born top notcher because that title is really so impressive that we don't want to miss, you know, who Vincent Bayawa really is, you know. So tell us about yourself. Good morning, Miss Olive, Miss Joanne, and to everyone listening here today. And that's actually a good question, as most of the people now know me as the top notcher, the top one. However, before topping and behind this achievement is a simple and a deeply religious person. In fact, I was a sacristan before in our local parish, and I was born and raised on one of the mountain barangay here in Cebu province. So our way of life is very simple. So both my parents were not able to finish their studies, um, elementary level and secondary level only. So we're one of those people who truly value education the most above all. So with that, um, from the mountain, I took my chance and find my way to CNU where I finished my bachelor's degree.
Hi everyone, this is Ms. Olive. Um, how's everyone? And we're very glad that we can be joined by our special guest today to talk about, you know, important information about uh, licensure examination for teachers in the Philippines. So let's all welcome Mr. Vincent Bayawa as he will give us information about the licensure exam for teachers uh, dates. He's going to cover dates. When can these exams be taken? And what are the dates, especially for 2022? What are the registration requirements? What are the subject areas that will be covered in the, in the board exam? And also, uh, what tips he could give for those who are still planning to register for the licensure exam this year? Welcome, Vincent. Ayan. So that is administered by PRC twice a year, every March and every September. However, due to the recent postponements of the previous exams, then they put all those examinees into four batches. First batch um, took the lead September 2021. That was my batch. Um, batch two last January, batch three this March, and batch four this June. So for those who would like to take the exam but were not able to apply before, then we can actually apply for the September 25, 2022 LET exam. However, the PRC has not yet opened the filing period. It will still be this coming April 25 to July 25. Mm. Ayan. So in terms of requirement, before you go to PRC, we actually need to secure an online appointment first. So first, we need to sign in to the official PRC website, create an account, add the picture, and also the personal details. After, um, click apply for an examination. We actually need to print out that application form and pay for the examination fee ahead of time for convenience. So on that day of your schedule, you show up, you bring those printed application form, the receipt of your examination fee, your TOR, NSO, and marriage certificate if you are a married female, your CIDULA, documentary stamp. You can actually buy that one in PRC directly for convenience. And also your passport size picture with name tag. Well, in terms of subject areas, for September 25, 2022 exam, the PRC has not yet posted an updated TOS. But in general, if you are B ed student, then you'll have Gen Ed and Prof Ed. So that's 40, 60, 40% 40 Gen Ed and 60% Prof Ed. If you are on the secondary degree program, then you'll have a specialization. So that is 40, 40, 20. 40 prof ed, 40 major, major, and another 20 for your general education. I am so general tips in terms of your lab preparation. If you wanted to take the lab this September or anytime sooner, so here are some tips that I did, and oh, and I hope that this can help you. I am. First is we need to define our goal and to specify and examine our biggest whys, our deepest whys, and why we need to take the board exam, why we need to pass the board exam, and why we need to top the board exam. Because these will be your motivation in terms of your preparation. Ayan. So second is prepare your preparation. Of course, we do not have any control on whatever questions will come up on that day. So preparation is the key. The more prepared you are, then the higher chance that you will get a good rating, pass and tap the board. Ayan. So third is 
of course, you need to take care of yourself. Ayan. So you drink vitamins B complex for your brain and vitamin C for your health. Ayan. Fourth is you plan ahead and specify your targets based on your weakness and strength. You do not need to focus on your strength, but focus on your weakness and make that one as your strength. Ayan. We need to master every concept as possible as we face the board exam. Next is number five. There is no best strategy in terms of reviewing or studying. Do not just copy someone because it worked for them. It might not work for you. So I would advise for you to examine yourself first, consult, your, consult yourself first on what strategy or method will work best for you. Ayan. It make it individualized. We have different learning style and types of intelligence. So you focus on that. Do not just copy someone. Ayan. Focus on yourself and what strategy works better. Six is... Review like you wanted to talk. Review like a top notcher. Ayan. It's very dangerous if your goal is just to pass. Always, always raise the standard. Right? Raise the standard. You need to get at least 90% of all the components of the let. And that should be our goal. At least if we miss, then we'll still get a good board rating. And of course, the last but not the least, always pray and ask for God's guidance. And he will never leave you in terms of your lead preparation. And, and he will take care of the rest. Attract positive attitude and positive mindset and destiny will conspire and he will give that license to you. Ayan. Ayan. And of course, in terms of answering the questions in the board exam, first is we need to analyze the questions very well. And especially in professional education, we base our answers on clues that can be found in the STEM. So then, um, always make sure to mark those clues. And if there are negative statements like the word exact, not, or but, make sure to mark them as well so that you will not overlook them. Ayan. And also, do not shade your answer. Ayan. Do not shade it if you're not yet sure of it. If you're not yet sure, then move on to the next answer because there is a tendency that the clue for that particular question can be found on the later part of the exam. So reserve it for the next. But make sure to go back to that question at the end. Ayan. And also, be careful on your answer sheet and always, always follow the instructions of the proctor so that you will not have any problem in terms of what you are doing. We are also very honored to have my former student, who is now a faculty of the Cebu Normal University, Ms. Joanne Maglasang, to give us the top five tips on how to pass the licensure exam for teachers. She's also going to give us the, the top five things she did as a student at Cebu Normal University so she could bring herself on the day of the board exam and say, hey, this is it. And also, finally, she will be sharing with us the top five things that you need to do before the exam, whether it's the week before the exam or the night before the exam. Take it away, job. Okay, miss. So that's quite a lot of fives there. So I'll begin with the first five. Okay, so five tips to pass the licensure examination for teachers. Okay, first would be be a wide reader. Actually, any book genre will do. It's just when you get used 
stopped reading, okay, then the text comes and you're already a fast reader, a swift reader, you can already spot right away what the question really asks of you, even if there are a lot of words in that question. So that's one, be a wide reader so that you can increase your reading comprehension skills as well as your speed in reading. Second, don't rely on handouts and on handouts and materials that have been provided to you. During my time, I even read my high school notes in my high school textbooks. Okay, It's because general education covers a wide range of topics, so it's good to not just rely on whatever the review center uh, provided for you. Okay, next, put yourself in the shoes of the one making the test. So it's actually to our advantage because we learn in a particular professional education subjects about those mechanics, principles, and guidelines in test construction. So it's actually to our advantage that we know how to make a multiple choice test and we can use this knowledge to discern and to identify which is the correct answer the best answer okay next we should not fret when we encounter a difficult question i'm pretty sure our parents will not get mad as will not get mad at us for getting one question wrong right okay so there so let's not get discouraged or disappointed or yeah like when we see a difficult question and it will already destroy everything that we have prepared for because of that just one or two questions which are out of this world. Okay, and number five, now solutions are not to be submitted okay, after the board exam. So this is for the math majors and even for the uh, math questions, general education math questions. So instead of trying to think over and over Okay, what the correct formula is or how this problem should be solved, we can just simply substitute. So there are choices anyway. So let's just substitute them, plug them into the for into the problem and see which one works. So those are my five tips on how to pass the licensure examination for teachers. Now going to the next five, it's about how to prepare for the day of the exam and even for life in general. So I have five, five S for that. Okay, my first S is sacrifice. Because so if we want something, we really have to sacrifice. So I didn't actually apply for a job okay, after graduating from college because I spent the time to really prepare for the licensure exam for teachers. So there are sacrifices that needs to be made and that was the sacrifice that I did. Okay, second, seek support. Okay, so it's good that we have our friends and our loved ones who will be there for us, who will accept us whether we pass or not pass the licensure examination for teachers. So these people will give, give us the reassurance that we need. Okay, third, spiritual life. So it's important for us to have a personal relationship with our creator. Okay, no matter our religion, it's good to hold on to someone, to talk to someone Okay, who would just listen? Okay, he doesn't have to respond. Okay, so it's just there to listen to our to our deepest desires and yearnings. Okay, fourth, okay, still an S sense of purpose. So why did I want to pass the board exam? Okay, it's because I really wanted to be a teacher. So ever since I was in sixth grade, I've always wanted to be a teacher. Okay, then the fifth S, slow down. So once in a while, you really find time to, to relax, okay, to enjoy, okay, to have fun. Our body needs that. We need that. We need to take care of ourselves. Okay, and for the last five, okay, things to do before the exam. So my acronym for that is FOCUS. So F stands for fix your eyes on the goal and just do your best. Okay, so... I wasn't really thinking about becoming a top-notcher, though my sister also topped the CPA board exam. So there was no pressure in my part for that, but I was just really praying that 
I'll pass the let in and not do a retake of the exam. Okay, then O is offer everything to God. Let's be open to His will for us. Okay, whatever the outcome of the board exam will be, okay, He is there. He knows best. And He knows the right timing for everything. Okay, then C, choose to go through the process. So there will be a lot of emotions that we will be feeling prior to the exam. We might feel we want to pee or we want to poo. <laughs> all of those emotions. So let's just feel all of those emotions. Okay, then accept that they're part of that messy process. Okay, then you okay, unload. So prior to the exam, we find a way to calm our nerves. I'm just glad at that time I didn't have yet a lot of anxieties because at present I have a lot of anxiety. So it's just lucky that that time I was still able to calm my nerves. Okay, I was also younger then. Okay, then finally, S, sleep. So I don't remember. It was too long ago. It was in 2005. Okay, but I think it's important that we really get a good night's sleep or try to have a good night's sleep prior to the board exam. So I hope those five, uh, those three sets of five tips will help you all okay, to be successful in the licensure examination for teachers. So I have a question for you, uh, Joanne and Vincent. Uh, I'm just really curious. What do you think is the impact of being a top-notcher in your lives? Could you say that being a bored top-notcher has changed your life? How do you notice it? Like, How do you know your life was changing because of that one special single event and that is topping the board exam in the whole of the Philippines. Yes, Ja? Yes. Okay, so thank you, Miss, for that question. So how did topping the licensure examination impact me? Okay, so I wasn't in Cebu when I found out that I that I topped the board exam. I was in Dumaguete that time. So it came as a surprise. Actually, I wasn't expecting it. I just knew that I did my best in answering the board examination. So like I always do, I do my best. Okay, whenever there are examinations. And I was happy because people around me were happy okay, that I topped the board exam. So I'm pretty sure my parents were proud. My sister was proud of me. They were happy about it. My friends, my schoolmates, my classmates, they were happy about it. My teachers were happy about it. The entire university was happy about it. And for that, I was happy as well because many were happy. So it's something that makes me happy when everyone's happy. So a lot of happies there. But yeah, just it was a happy moment. Then that atmosphere of happiness, optimism. Okay, so it's something very good and infectious. So that was how that impacted me. Okay, then how has it changed my life? So when I was applying for jobs, so it's nice you can put that in your resume that you top the board exam. Though some might perceive it not so positively because they might think that you're no longer teachable or trainable because it might it might appear to them that you know it all already because you topped the board exam. Okay, but I still I'm glad 
that I did top the board exam because when I hit rock bottom in my life, okay, then it was a good thing that I have that experience that I can look back to. Okay, like when things did not go so well for me for the previous five to six years, okay, then I had that to remember. Okay, I had that moment of being a top notcher to savor and reminisce. So it helped me uh, have uh, regain the confidence that I lost in myself. And it helped me to, to rediscover that my potentials, what I'm capable of doing, okay, and that things do happen for, for a reason. And I suppose that topping the board exam, the reason for that was it's something that I can hold to, something that I can return to whenever things may seem uh, not to go my way or not how I would want things to be according to my standards. So that would be all for that question, Miss Olive. Now, you see, uh, Joe and Vincent, you know, prep, preparing for the test is one thing, okay? Uh, uh, a student could have really prepared, could have had a good night's sleep, but then on the day of the test, you know, would have some mental block. So, or, or everything just on paper is not what the person is expecting. And it's just really hard to to begin, or or for others it could be like, oh, this is what I really expected, but wait, how do I approach approach this whole exam thing? So I wonder, are there any strategies that you used uh, on the day of the exam in order to tackle the test itself and be assured, like? you know what, I think I covered everything. I think I did my best on that part. So I wonder, what are your strategies during the day of the test? Okay, so thank you, Miss, for that question. So how did topping the licensure examination impact me? Okay, so I wasn't in Cebu, when I found out that I that I topped the board exam, I was in Dumaguete that time. So it came as a surprise. Actually, I wasn't expecting it. I just knew that I did my best in answering the board. Now, you see, uh, Joe, I'm just really wondering if, you know, Another curious, curious question, because um, I know you as a student, but on a very personal level, I know you have very special thoughts. And I'm just wondering, Ms. Ms. John McGlassan, how have you used, you know, the gift of being the top notcher uh, in the board exam? How have you used that gift, you know? Uh, for yourself and for the others. And I do have the same question for Vincent. Vincent, how do you uh, plan to use the gift of being the board top notcher in order to help yourself and others? Thank you. Thank you, Miss, for that beautiful question. <laughs> okay, my, my beauty pageant. Okay, so how did I use that gift for myself? And how did I use that gift to help others? So come to think of it, I'm just glad that this question was is being asked of me now. Okay, so after I topped the board exam, Dr. Velasquez invited me to, to teach in Cebu Normal University as a part-time faculty member. Okay, I conducted reviews for, 
yeah, I've conducted reviews for the lab. Okay, for those who were really, what's this? Uh, achieving or the high performers of the batch next to me. So I conducted uh, lab reviews for them. And, and of course, I accepted that invitation because I would really want to, to help to produce more top top notchers for Cebu Normal University, but after that, I decided to to leave CNU. Okay, I felt that I wasn't prepared yet for college teaching. I need to have experience, actual teaching experience. Okay, in the what's this basic basic education schools. So things were just going my way with with my my career with with my family life okay then of course until certain events had to happen okay and you you question of course why some of those events happened and once you see this plan at this divine plan unfolding. Okay, and I saw myself really striving to obtain my master's degree after how many years? Uh 2005. I finished it in 2000. So after 12 years. So yeah, I spent 12 years actually for my master's degree. Okay, and yeah, I really worked hard to achieve it amidst the, the ongoing personal problems they had to face that time. And, and then I saw myself wanting to go back to CNU. So I finished my master's degree to go back to CNU. And my parents were there to remind me that I ought to give back to Cebu Normal University for the, for the good things that the university had done for me way back I, when I was a student in the university. And so there, and so then it, uh, what's this? It was a moment of clarity for me, okay, of what my purpose really as a top, not sure, okay, and that is to, to give back to Cebu Normal University. And so I find my, what's this, my role as a teaching internship mentor of great importance so i it was good that i had 10 years of experience as a basic education teacher i taught for six years in the private school and four years in the public school so i used my role as a teaching internship mentor to really help the practice teachers while they're in their internship and i i journeyed with them in their practicum okay i also conducted uh reviews for the licensure examination for teachers so there i saw that i was able to be of help there i saw that i finally got to be useful okay my being a top notcher became finally once again of use of benefit to others, to my most especially to my fellow normalites. Okay, so I really find joy in being able to impart my knowledge and skills to the pre-service teachers of the College of Teacher Education. It gives me joy, it gives me a sense of pride that they are really able to improve themselves during the course of internship. And it gives me much delight and it makes me happy when, of course, when I know that my former teaching interns, practice teachers, passed the licensure uh, examination for teachers. And then I would see their pictures in Facebook that they're also teaching already, whether it be in private or in public schools. So that... Uh, with the things that happen in my life, I find myself 
glad to be back in Cebu Normal University and just paying it forward. You know, Vincent, you did something that a lot, a lot of students can only dream of. And the way people know you by being the number one in the board exam is really like, whoa, it's really different. Like people look up to you. And I wonder if, you know, this is how you view yourself or how would you like to you know, introduce yourself to others, especially to our viewers who are right now, who, right now who are, uh, in a way, hoping to get to know you, like, you know, you as a person and not just the number one board top notcher, because that title is really so impressive that we don't want to miss, you know, who Vincent Bayawa really is, you know, so tell us about yourself. All right. Thank you so much for that. And I know we have some slides there that are empty and I know it's just due to technical problems, but we are going to re-upload again their answers and we're going to try to fix it. I'm just so happy that I finally have seen Joanne here. Joanne and I, as mentioned earlier, Joanne mentioned it, that she was with Miss Olive also with the trips that we had back when we were in college and we were in the same university. Hi, Joe! Finally, you are here with me in one screen. I am just so happy that we have reconnected after 17 years. Oh my gosh! Hi, Joe! Kamusta? You are hi, hi! <laughs> It, oh it's goodness. really good to see you both, Miss Olive and Miss Anne. So, mga lagan. Yes, kumusta naman ang atang tago-tago dito sa dako kaayong nga ka ng mga, mga trees sa bagyo, no? <laughs> <laughs> Hasa naman to. Anyways, we're looking forward in seeing you sa CNU again when we go home in our balik turo, when we go back in the Philippines. But I just have one question, John. I know we have um questions here in our chat let me just see if i missed anything because when i was sharing earlier i was not able to see the chat but thank you again for sharing your knowledge your expertise your your expertise to our fellow teachers in cnu as well as to us right now i know it's been a long time but seeing your purpose now you know recently it's it's really good it's really good you know and we we know you know we would you would still go places and you know your god will give the desires of your heart now because you finally have seen your purpose Mark, miss universe but no <laughs> anna basically though friends if you have questions please type now miss olive is saying that irim aim said i would like to ask if the questions for dpe takers are the same with the usual test questions for education graduates thank you and so then in dpe Diploma for diploma, yes, for professional okay. education, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah, so okay. it's also being offered in Cebu Normal University. Okay. And I'll answer the question, uh, Miss. Sure, sure. Ah, okay. okay. So yes, you will be exactly. Ah, uh, you will be taking exactly the same exam. Okay, with exactly the same set of questions. Then for for DPI, I suppose you will have your major. You will be, for example, if you're an accountancy graduate, most likely you will be taking for your major the either math. Yeah, you can choose to take the math exam for your major. So I I am also handling some some students currently in olivares college so they're doing tcp so like they they had different degrees for their bachelor not not the education degrees mm -hmm. so they're taking of course the extra the extra professional education courses so that mm -hmm. they will be allowed to to take the licensure exam for for teachers so there's one uh, he was taking up 
computer science if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. for his bachelor's degree so for mm -hmm. for his major soon for the board exam he will be taking math so so yes you really have to to go through the same process the same exam you will answer the general education subjects you will answer the professional education subjects and for your major it would depend on your former bachelor's degree i hope i'm able to answer your your question i ran thank you so much yes so that's diploma in professional education so bale second course or sila jo and they are trying to get the uh, the certificate or the diploma in education miss olive is still on the plane and trying to get in miss i see you sa ano ha sa bottom but when i put you up here it's all black Right, Joe. Any other question? Wow, well, very informative, Joe. I hope we have helped Irene the question. That's right. So, Joe, me, I am just so proud of you. And I was just taking notes earlier when you said your sister also aced the CPA exam. It's, I think, just a maglasang thing. I know your your maglasang last name is very popular in Cebu. And, you know, you, you stand tall in that education department also. And I'm proud that I know you. Yes, Alvin said, magkaila ba mi sa CNU? Yes, I was in fourth year college. And I think Joe was in first year. Joe, sakto? I think so. Yeah. Di pa sa di sa tayo na ano kayo kalayo. Wait, ano naman si Guru? Ito tayo na kalayo. Graduate. Ano saan mo dahi ka nga year ni graduate? 2005. Ano, our third year dahi ka ato representative. Ah, thank you. John and I were also not just in sa alumni, sa Rizal representative. I, we were in, oh my gosh, the, 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 Oh my goodness, education jo on sa ganin na kalimut lagi ko sa educators club. Educators club. Oh my goodness, I was the treasurer in educators club and John was the representative sa third year. Sakto, yes. So we were in the same orgs, two orgs actually, and Miss Olive was our mentor. Yes, and I'm here, and she's just saying, "Hala si Louie nagpakita na Miss one year gap." Ready? I I thought it was that hala grabi. Si Louie Miss kinangla na ni nato siya on board pero di gud siya magpakita pero nagcomment gud siya na dili gud ming unana katigong one year agud ko no 2004 taan 2005 si Joan with Lloyd. Oh my goodness, memories, memories, memories. These are the people that went to Baguio. Baguio, guys, is very memorable to us because especially for me, it was my very first trip outside of Cebu. I mean, riding the airplane, and it was for free. For you to be able to ride an airplane, go outside of Cebu, and it's for free because the university paid for us. And we were representative of the Cebu Normal University to the National Rizal Youth Leadership that was held in Baguio. So it was just a proud moment that every time we go home and we will have our medals, we will have our plaques, and we will have a courtesy call to the president of the Cebu Normal University, Dr. Velasquez. It was just a very good feeling, you know. We call ourselves leaders and we claim that. And we know that those experiences had help us if not prepared us for the real life right jo miss olive kuno one more time adili kita miss digid ka kita sige daw ben apa ba in question good morning teachers what's the best time to study po and like how many hours you allotted your time in studying thanks a lot there you go. There's the questions. I love the questions, guys. Keep on coming because free. Ne. Joanne is actually a um, a university teacher now. And she, as what you've heard, mag review siya. And then she has courses. And this is professional answers for free. So go ahead, Jo. What, what's the best time gonna to study? And how many hours do you allot for studying? What's the best time to study? <laughs> I think it would really depend on uh, you, po, because if you're a nocturnal being, <laughs> which is I'm not a nocturnal being, okay. So uh, I think, yeah, if you, if like, you would also consider your your own schedule because you might be currently having a daytime job. Mm -hmm. So of course, the best time to study for you would be in the evening, perhaps, okay, before you go to sleep. Okay, or if you don't have a daytime job and you're just going to be reviewing full time, okay, then the whole day, you have the entire day, you have the luxury of time to do your review. Now, for, for observations uh, with my sister, she really studied during the 
What's this? Dawn. Mm, she studied yeah. during dawn when everything is quiet. Mm-hmm. So you can really focus. So mm-hmm. so I suppose it really depends on your schedule and what would work best for you. Now, f- mm-hmm. now for me before, I when I study for, uh, not the long exams though, I study in front of the television. Sorry. So, <laughs> so it depends on That's our... Learning, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it depends on our learning style. On right, maybe right. we can study with music, with background music, it yes. works best for us. Or if we can study with the TV on, and if, if that works well for us, then then go ahead. But but I suppose for for most adult learners, we really prefer siguro a serene and a quiet yes. environment, free from noise, etc. So yeah, during dawn. Yeah. Around three well, a.m. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. Our top notcher earlier from last year also Vincent was mentioning about B twelve B complex something like that. So he was taking that kind of vitamins. I remember my Lola would always give me money and milk because they would say those are the food for for the brain. Now, do you have something like that, Joe, when you were studying back then? Food for the brain? <laughs> no, I think I ju- uh, I always kept myself hydrated it's important yeah, to really drink good. a lot of water it's h2o there's oxygen it's good to our to have our brains really with oxy oxygenated you our brains right now, right now. No, when we feel stressed and we feel, you know we feel headache drink then just have water. To drink water. that's right yes, um, yes. thank you for always supporting us maybe soon if god's will i will be taking the board exam either in agriculture or accounting oh that's good so what would there is really a need for us to get certified guys because if we want something and we want to be we want to be in a position where we are in we really need to be board certified you know and um uh i really like that part when you mentioned joe that you sacrifice something i remember me and louis applied for a job right away january pa lang nang apply na mig jobs because that's our priority. We 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 wanted to help our families right away. Like after graduation, we wanted to have a job. So we had a job. But with you, you aced the exam because that was your priority. Why was that 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 was your priority in your head? I know your your family might be affluent. They might be able to, you know, afford or they were able to afford and you were not needed to work right away. But were you forced or was that really your priority or it was imposed why was it like that what made you decide okay so we're not really affluent po, just <laughs> no we're... no it's just my both my parents are are, are working they're both yeah. government employees so that's why i'm also a government employee now because they're both government employees so they're yeah uh, so I suppose my, the sacrifices of my my elder sister. She's three years older than I than I am. So mm. so yeah, she she is the the what's this licensure exam? Uh, how do you call that the CPA board exam? Mm-hmm. So she had a good job. She was my uh, sponsor. So, ah, that, so there was sponsor. yeah. So she she spent for me. She she paid for my college and college tuition in fact she gave me my my daily allowance and for that i'm really grateful Mm -hmm. to her so so the sacrifices that she she did for me Mm -hmm. okay so so in the uh so also in return i i decide it was my personal decision actually because it was also the same for my sister she didn't apply right away for a job she also What's this? I uh, studied for the board exam. So in that mm-hmm. way, I, I copied yes. her yeah, strategy. Yeah, it was a family. You were like, you know what? I want to prioritize. And, and that was yes. really good. So I have one last thing for you to be doing. But again, I just want to thank you for saying yes to this interview, for even coming in, even after Nani recorded, no? Sana all talaga. Yes, yeah, sana all good. Anyways, I just want to say thank you to, of course, Cebu Normal University as what every, if not everybody knows, Cebu Normal University is a government funded school so we only pay a little bit of our tuition and even with that little bit i still want to thank my of course my auntie who also supported me when i was in college um i want to thank miss olive i know miss olive can hear us i want to thank miss olive i've 
I I think my very first meeting with Miss Olive was in second year college, and from then on, I was just so inspired with her, young stories, and how good she was, and how neatly she dressed back then. So that actually magnetized me to like, okay, look up to her. And really, after that one, I want to thank um, you know, the Educators Club, the Alumni of Rizal. Those were, I feel like, uh, my experiences back in college because I was not this. You know what I mean? I I I was I I don't consider myself in high school to be a leader or student leader, but it was in college that I knew okay, I have a potential. Miss Olive was there to support me. So with and my friends, of course, um, through the orgs, through even Louis. Louis was not the same uh, in the same uh, math department that I was in, but we became friends because we were in the same organizations, and even right now we are still friends. But with you, Joe, my last parting words or your last words, I know you have been giving back to Cebu Normal right now, but any other last words for you to say to those who have helped you become the person you are right now? Okay, I'll work. 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 So yeah, so many college teachers have really helped me to be the person that I am now. Then some of them are also my colleagues now in CNU. A few na lang di ay kasi some have already left. Then of course I miss Doctor Atibula. So he already he already passed away. So so yeah, I I miss Doctor Atibula and and up to now I can still his I can still feel his influence. And of course my deepest gratitude to Miss Olive. So ah I'm. I'm a kind of person, cause that needs to be pushed, cause I'm just, what's this? Even if I know what I'm capable of, I'm kind of evasive. I tend to shy away from responsibilities, like please don't give me additional <laughs> tasks yeah. or don't burden me with tasks, even though I I know what I'm capable of doing. Uh -huh. So I'm grateful to Miss Olive for, for patiently yeah for patiently really pushing me to to do things and and really tapping my potentials okay so maybe i was just tired already because when i was in elementary and high school i was also doing all of these things already so when i entered college i was already tired of doing those things i'm really grateful to miss olive and of course the friendships that i made with the people i met in the different organizations if if, we're, if it were not for these organizations i would not meet miss ann louis <laughs> okay, so kalog and lagubs it's, it's really fun it's fun to get to know people okay we hear from them we'll we hear stories from them we learn from them so it's it's really wonderful to 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 join these different organizations and to to meet people and learn from them so thank you very much miss Anne and miss olive for this very wonderful opportunity to to share okay my my life story oh no who good yes but thank you again joe let's see one more time if miss olive can say something you're still black miss <laughs> so that's what happens i guess your internet up there is not that strong even if you're way up on the sky but again thank you joe we are gonna try to redo this um slideshows yours was okay but vincent's um videos were not played well or right i don't know what happened but again thank you thank you thank you and i hope this is not going to be the last and i know we will have more and the same thing as what you're doing. You're giving back to Cebu Normal. Right now, we have been here for more than a year now. We have the Alumni of Rizal Facebook and YouTube pages active. Just because the mere reason that we just want to extend information out there for free, especially during the pandemic. And yeah, we're just happy in what we're doing. And yeah, we've seen our purpose. And I know 
that we have viewers here that also are here for the giveaways, but I really don't know how that works. So I will definitely be looking into the comments and we'll be announcing the winners later. Let me get the word from Miss Olive. Ayan, Asa, di ay si Miss Olive. Hala, Asa, kuno ka, Miss, nainangita ni mo. Si Alvin. Anyway, so thank you, Joe. Have a good morning there. I know it's Saturday there. 11 o'clock, thank you so much. And to everyone that joined us on our live stream, thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Olive. You're in the background. I see you, but you could not join us. Thank you, and stay blessed, and enjoy, everyone. Thanks, Joe. Bye, guys. Thank you. All right. We 